Welcome to the Dylan Show. What's up, people? How y'all doing? You doing good? That's good to that's good to know. That's good to hear. If you're not doing so well, we wish you nothing but happiness. Um, and you know what? You know what's funny is we're back into this. We're back into this grind. We are halfway through the second season, and a year and a half ago, uh, not even a year and a half ago, a year and two months. Um, I would have never thought the first season would be finished and now we're halfway through the second season. So thank you guys for the continued support and bless and blessings at all times. Uh, it's truly meant to lie. Let's keep working and get through this second season. Um, today, we are taking a bit of a turn in our usual shows of the week. And this is not a typical interview, so don't expect anything typical at all. This is not anything normal. We don't do normalcy around here on the Dayland Show, people. But I would please like to announce and introduce my man, Mr. Joel Peterson from the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. Everybody, play, please clap it up. Yes, please. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Peterson. Um, first off, how are you doing? Um, how is COVID life treating you? And just what's been the news around you in Vegas right now? Uh, thanks, Dalen, for the opportunity. And uh, thank you. And uh, hello to all your listeners. Um, so as Dalen mentioned, I work for the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. What does that do? What our organization, if you've ever heard of the slogan, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, that has been modified uh, last year. We actually modified our slogan. What happens in Vegas only happens in Vegas. Um, our organization is the one that created that whole advertising slogan, but we're, a, we're kind of a government agency that's funded by the visitor tax, but all the, the tax revenue is goes right back into the marketing of the destination. So my specific role within our organization is to help uh, inspire people to come to Las Vegas. Uh, it is, uh, it's not your grandma and grandpa's destination anymore. Um, we've come a, a, a long way. Um, you know, Vegas and Atlantic City used to be the kind of the two places you go for that, uh, that Vegas or that uh, casino junket trip. And you know, now that casinos are really throughout the whole United States and you can do online sports betting, we've had to really evolve differently over the years. And um, I'm happy to say, you know, I love where we're at and I love where we're actually progressing to. Um, and I know a lot of your listeners, Dalen, um, probably are, are sports fans, as am I. Uh, I'm actually in the, the Chicagoland area, but I uh, visit and, and work with retail travel agencies that help you, you know, and, and your listeners kind of consult with them, coach them as to, you know, what's the best vacation experience opportunity if Las Vegas is that choice? What hotel is the best one to stay at based on what I'm looking for? What's the airline choice I should do? And what should I, what, should, what are the activities I do? Um, I'm excited to talk about a little bit about the sports town USA that Las Vegas is. A lot of people kind of, you know, still laugh a little bit. I mean, we've got hockey in the desert. I mean, that took a while for people to be like, you, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, you know what? Tampa Bay just won two uh, Stanley Cups the yeah. last two years, and they're in Florida. So just because we're in the desert, uh, it doesn't make a difference. But um, you know, we're we're really excited that um, for sports fans, we are now becoming such a mecca of so many uh, opportunities in different sports that people can take advantage of, and it gives them an excuse to come to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, so if we first start off on you know kind of the basketball side, so uh, right now we're excited that uh, coming up in the month of August. Uh, we have the NBA Summer League that we host uh, from August 8th to the 17th, which is, uh, which is great for us. Um, we also have a WNBA women's basketball team called the Las Vegas Aces. So we have both sides of that. Obviously, we don't have a professional basketball team yet, we hope, mm -hmm. but uh, you never know and never say never that Las Vegas would be a perfect city yeah. um, you know, to host an NBA team. We already have the arena that the Vegas Golden Knights hockey team uses, so there definitely could be a dual purpose role with that. Um, but when you talk about kind of basketball and, and um, you know, March Madness was incredible. I was, uh, you know, the Gonzaga Baylor game this year was such a, an interesting, uh, you know, um, opportunity to see how um, college basketball should be played, especially in the Baylor side. It was great. Um, but come on March Madness, that weekend, that opening college basketball weekend is probably one of our highest demand weekends of the entire year. Uh, so many people use that as an opportunity to get together with friends and really enjoy all the different venues that you can watch the games, not just in the sports books, but there's so many sports centric uh, restaurants and bars and so forth that people are really finding 
uh, a lot of entertainment to uh, to enjoy watching, whether it's going to be March Madness, whether it's going to be now the NFL. So uh, excited that, you know, the NFL uh, Las Vegas Raiders uh, are in Las Vegas for their second year now. Uh, we built a brand new $2 billion stadium that's literally right across the highway from the Strip. Um, they will be having full capacity this year with fans. Uh, we have the Bud Light Beer Garden opening up across from the Luxor, which is free admission to the general public. Um, so, and people don't know that literally you will be able to walk on the Strip right across the highway um, to the game on, on game day. Um, so, you're, you're, you know, some people may do Ubers and transportation and so forth, but uh, you know, with, with the, uh, the Raiders, uh, I'm excited personally, the Chicago Bears play this year. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to excited what the outcome will be, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, the ticket prices, uh, four of the top five highest average ticket prices are four Raiders home games this year. The only one that topped us is Tom Brady's return to New England uh, mm -hmm. this year with the Bucs. So, um, so we're excited. And, um, you know, talking about next year already, you know, booking early and looking at early, I, I can't stress how important that is because hotel rates are going to be higher uh, the longer that, uh, you know, that you wait. Um, and next year, not only is uh, Las Vegas hosting on the NFL side, uh, the Pro Bowl, uh, but we're also hosting the draft, uh, April 28th to the 30th. Uh, the NFL draft may be the single largest event we've ever hosted in our city. Um, we we're probably expecting five to 600,000 people that will come into Las Vegas over that weekend. There's gonna be a ton of different free, fun exhibits and activities that are going on throughout the destination. Um, but book early and think about coming out for NFL draft weekend. We're going to be building a floating stage yep. in the lake in front of the Bellagio stage underneath the high roller. And I've also heard there may be some draft picks that once they, um, they're announced, they may be top of the stratosphere and jumping off um, the, the bungee. Um, bungee jump off the stratosphere. I'm sure their lawyers and attorneys probably won't like that from an insurance perspective. Yeah. But for the effect that will be, ASPN, I'm sure will love that. I'm sure they're broadcasting it. So, um, so really, there are so there's monumental sporting events that are going on in Las Vegas. We're hosting the NHL All Star Game next year as well. So, um, I say this because we have such a wide sports appeal. And I even mentioned that we've got the, uh, the professional bull rider world final in November of this year. We have the national final rodeo uh, that's coming in December of this year over 10 days. So, uh, and we have a NASCAR race at the end of September. So um, you got to find some sport in there that you might uh, like and enjoy that you would love to come to Las Vegas uh, to hopefully enjoy. So. Talking, going back to earlier uh, for the listeners, I, is when I said this isn't a typical interview, I won't be asking too many questions. I actually do have a question right after this, but this is really on Mr. Peterson to, this is his job to persuade as many people as he can to come to Vegas. Um, so my question is for us as me that I've never been to Vegas, what makes Vegas better than any other city in the world? What makes Vegas stand out better than any other city in the world? So why should I come to Vegas? You bet. So I think, you know, when we look at what we have for resort accommodations, we have some of the nicest five-star properties in the world, not just in the United States, but in the world from properties like the Bellagio, the Venetian, the Wynn. So uh, I love it because you can find a great uh, all budget hotel option. You can save five-star luxury, but if you don't have the budget for that, you can find something in the middle. And if you're looking to really um, save money, and maybe say, hey, you know what? I don't spend a lot of time in the room. I'd rather spend my budget in the destination. We have a slew of different properties that can fit that price point. So Las Vegas offers all different price points, all different amenities and options to choose from. Secondly, we are a great destination for dining. We have so many celebrity chef restaurants, um, but we have you know, um, you know, day-to-day -day places that uh, you may find in your own communities as well. But you know, when you want to splurge, maybe at a Gordon Ramsay restaurant, uh, or a Bobby Flay restaurant. Uh, it's really, Vegas is, the way reason I love it, I've been in that travel industry for 25 years, and I'm, I'm not saying this because I sell it, but when I'm in that airplane coming in, it almost feels like it's my first time, and it's the excitement to see the strip, the skyline, but knowing that every, every trip there um, creates a different story that you can bring home to tell. And you know, it's funny, being in an industry and you know, ask like, hey, you've been to Vegas? Usually it starts with a smile and it always is followed by a story. You know, it's, it's maybe a celebrity run-in that you, you know, we're in the elevator with 
or you saw walk through the casino. And I like those moments that mm -hmm. Vegas is such a wide appeal destination for celebrities, professional athletes. You really never know who you're going to run into uh, and can see. I mean, I've seen Gordon Ramsay walking through the, you know, the, the casino at Caesars Palace. I've ridden in an elevator at the Cosmopolitan with Richard Sherman, but also Kevin Nealon, who used to be a Saturday Night Live cast member as well. So you, you just know, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but what I also like is I get a lot of questions. Is it, you know, with the gambling and the drinking and all those types of things, like would I bring a family there? I actually have two teenage boys that I, I um, and my wife, we actually went to Las Vegas this year for the first time. And um, it was, it was an awesome trip. Um, we stayed one night on the strip. We did a David Copperfield magic show. My boys were just like, never seen a show like that. It was overwhelming. And he's such a legend in the, uh, in that destination. But when, then we went out and we stayed at Red Rock Resort out in Red Rock Canyon and had an absolute ball. We went hiking for the afternoon and it really has appeal that people are just looking, you know, that are adults that are looking for guys weekend, girls weekend, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, a big birthday weekend, a uh, big anniversary weekend, but families are going out there and there's things that can, uh, that they can find to do. Um, so I feel like Vegas can provide experiences that uh, other um, destinations cannot offer. Our location in Southern Nevada, next to, you know, we have so many state and national parks that are around that area as well. So with COVID, you know, a lot of people are, we're interested to do a lot of outdoor type of activities and you have that option. Um, plus you have really unique experiences you can't find anywhere else in Vegas. Uh, we have a great company called Dig This where you can actually go, uh, um, you can drive a bulldozer. Uh, you can crush cars, um, take out your COVID aggression out uh, in the cab of a bulldozer or a backhoe. Um, you can jump off uh, the 1100 foot stratosphere on a bungee jump. Uh, you can you know, go to the top of the Eiffel Tower at the Paris Hotel to take in all the views from the strip. You can take in the views of the Bellagio Fountains. Some of the most Instagrammed spots in the world are in Las Vegas. Um, so it gives you a wow factor, but more importantly is we want people to come to Vegas. They're gonna know like, wow, I, I, I didn't know they had all these different things. I thought it was just about the gambling. And we try really hard within our organization to show our visitors what more we can offer um, that you can't find in other uh, kind of leisure um, leisure markets. You, you, you hit on it a little bit uh, about the family perspective of what can, you know, like younger kids do with their families in Vegas. Um, do you mind talk going into that a little bit more about particular things for families um, that, you know, can't separate because of young kids? Also, um, what is the goal for you um, within Vegas? What, what is the end goal that you want to get out of Vegas? Sure thing. So, so for our organization, our, um, our, the tourism industry is what drives the economy and it drives the jobs in the destination. So our purpose is through all of our marketing efforts, through all our travel partners, we wanna drive what we call heads and beds. The more people we drive to the destination, the occupancies at the hotels are doing well and they're in a financially healthy situation that continues to allow them to uh, employ people uh, and keep uh, our unemployment rate down and it helps to drive our economy. So that, that really is our, our, our um, ultimate goal is to drive as much tourism as we can to the destination that helps the economy. Speaking though, from the family side, there are certainly properties that are family friendly. Uh, some properties like Red Rock Resort or Green Valley Ranch or South Point, you know, on site, they'll have, they have bowling alleys, they have movie theaters, um, they have kids uh, like activity um, clubs as well. But as far as activities to do for younger families, uh, the Top Golf location, Top Golf is a multi level um, target golfing range where you're trying to hit uh, balls that all have a GPS chip and different targets. But the view of the Top Golf driving range is of the strip and at the very end of the driving range. So there's tall nets. So you don't have, you know, golf balls, you know, flying left and right, um, you know, over the strip. But um, they have, you know, three 50 foot TVs that are televising sports, sporting events, um, which is very popular. Lots of virtual reality uh, experiences, uh, Shark Reef Aquarium at Mandalay Bay, uh, this uh, secret garden dolphin habitat at the Mirage. So there's a slew of different uh, family friendly activities that are available 
um, for, for, uh, for families to do and, and take advantage of. Uh, you mentioned the, the involvement of the sports economy in Vegas and how it's growing basically every year. Um, of course, the Raiders just recently moved to Las Vegas. Um, talk about the involvement that that has within your job, um, in, including not only the Raiders, but of course, the Golden Knights, uh, the Aces, and the, hopefully the joint forces of the NBA, and hopefully an MLB team at one point. What, talk about what the sure. sports world does for your job. You bet. So with the, uh, the Raiders move alone, um, you know, the, the funding to build the new stadium, you know, brought uh, probably five to 10,000 new jobs, uh, construction jobs to the destination. So it was, it was a driver on the economy side. But now that you have this beautiful new 65,000 seat stadium, that's created new jobs now for the community. Uh, T-Mobile Arena, where the Golden Knights play, has created new jobs for the economy. Um, so for us, our vested interest is how can we create new uh, you know, sport entities to consider Las Vegas um, to bring their team, to bring their franchise that if anything is going to just hopefully bring jobs to the community, um, but more visitors. You know, so when you look at the popularity, I mean, let's be honest, Raiders games at 65,000 seats, you're going to have a you're going to have a decent percentage of out of town fans that are coming in for those games. Right. And why is that a good thing for the destination is. People have to stay at hotels. They got to go out eat at restaurants. They may want to do activities over the weekend. So the destination benefits from our out of town fans, even though Mark Davis and the owner is going to want it to look like, uh, you know, Raider nation in the stadium. Um, the golden Knights had that same, you know, issue. Um, I didn't say issue, but their first year, you know, they, they had, they were having groups that were booking from other, uh, other cities and on TV, it didn't necessarily look like a home game. And so the owner of the Golden Knights was like, we got we to gotta look at that, um, you know, as far as how, um, you know, we're uh, selling tickets. And believe me, it's not like they're restricting people from coming out of town. I don't want to give you the wrong impression. But when you look at the popularity of, hey, I'm in Chicago, the Blackhawks are coming. This is a great example. The Blackhawks are playing March 26th next, next year on a Saturday night which is the second weekend of the March Madness tournament. Mm -hmm. That for me is an amazing sports weekend that I could go out and watch college basketball all weekend and then go to a, a Blackhawks Golden Knights hockey game. Um, so for that, it's it, sports is really creating new vacation opportunities, I think, for people. As you probably know, you know, you know sports fans are loyal and they travel very well. Some teams are, are notoriously much better than others that travel. And I know Bears fans travel very well, um, you know, but there's a lot of examples of those. But for, for us, we're excited that sports has, um, maybe will create a new uh, experience for someone that maybe has never been to Las Vegas, but they're a, a diehard Miami Dolphins fan. And the Dolphins play in Las Vegas this year. Never would have thought to go into Vegas. And now they may have a great experience um, because they went to, a Gordon Ramsay celebrity chef restaurant, or they went to Top Golf, or you know they, uh, you know, went on the rides at the top of the stratosphere, and all of a sudden, I didn't know Vegas all this fun stuff. I thought it was just gambling, and I hear it a lot that I'm not a gambler. Vegas would not be something I'd be interested yeah. in. You know, we can go over 15, 20 things and say that's cool. We're we're fine with that um, because here is 20 things that Las Vegas could offer you that you cannot find in. New Orleans or New York or Chicago or, you know, Orlando or, you know, whatever, you know, another very popular leisure destination, you know, we, we compete against. So, um, so for us, that that's really important for us that sports really wasn't something we had previously uh, as, as a, as an, as an option for people to really take advantage of. And now we've got NHL, we got NFL and, you know, the, uh, and, you know, you know, no secret, but, you know, the Oakland A's president and owner has been to Las Vegas four times in the last couple months looking at property because mm -hmm. um, it does not appear that Oakland may uh, fund a new stadium for them. So, you know, to think MLB could be an option. Nothing's confirmed, but, you know, it's been in the news, obviously, that they've been in Las Vegas looking. So um, for us, we're, we're excited that we can take advantage of that. And then not only have the sports, but it's all the entertainment, all the headliner residencies that we have in Las Vegas. You know, Usher just started his residency this last month, and the reviews of that were on some of the, the major network morning shows. 
incredible, incredible shows. Uh, but other country music stars that are coming, uh, you know, Aerosmith has had a residency, Lady Gaga has had a residency, um, Shania Twain's coming up right now in, in, in December. It's really, really incredible uh, that you can see some of these major artists that maybe only play 20, 30,000 seat arenas, they're playing three to 5,000 seat arenas. So it's a far more intimate musical experience um, that can complement, you know, go to a concert one night and then you got a sporting game the other. So there's limitless options. In, in the growing society of social media, um, how do you guys try to evolve Vegas as much as possible through social media? And also how do you reach those? I know it may not be many, but how do you reach those who aren't on social media and have no way of getting to know what's on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook? Sure, it, it, it can be a challenge. Um, you know, I can tell you, we will bring in um, to capitalize on social media that we will bring what we call social media influencers. So those that are in different popularity categories for different things, whether it's fashion, photography, but they have multiple, multiple followers that we, we take advantage of. However, from a non-social media side, and we realize not everybody is on Facebook or Insta or you know, Twitter, et cetera, um, it's still kind of grassroots, you know? Uh, I think word of mouth and referrals of you know, friends that have you know, been to Las Vegas, that never is gonna go away. I don't think social media ever is gonna re, you know, replace that. So um, we work very closely with a lot of retail travel agencies throughout the United States um, to you know, do in-person events, networking events with our hotel partners. So our travel agency partners, whether they're home base or whether they have a retail storefront, um, you can find them online uh, in many, many places. Um, I know um, you obviously have an affiliation with Skyline Getaways Travel, uh, which is an agency that can book everything we talked about, yep. hotels, show tickets, sporting event tickets, um, airfare, and package it all together. Uh, we really rely on a lot of the kind of the word of mouth marketing that we can still, um, that we still need to rely on because as you said, Dale, not everybody is on social media out there. Um, and uh, but our, our average, um, you know, I'm sorry, our, our number one demographic right now is, is the millennial generation, but we still get Gen X and, and baby boomers that are coming to Las Vegas. And, you know, the boomers are the ones learning social media from the, from their the grandkids and kids. Right. But, um, but they still may not just get how Facebook works, but, you know, mm -hmm. they may see their, uh, their pal at bridge club, you know, at church and say, Hey, you know, Millie and I went to Vegas last weekend and, you know, we saw Wayne Newton and it was awesome. You know what I mean? So something that kind of basic still, I, it still happens today. And we need to make sure that we're um, reaching those agencies through travel partners, uh, like a retail travel agency that uh, is the expert and can coach uh, any of your listeners on kind of how to maximize their vacation experience should they choose to come to Las Vegas. Um, and at the end of this, I will include the Skyline Getaways Travel Agency info into the episode. So if you guys want to book um, a trip to Vegas, which is the whole point of Mr. Peterson being on to do his job, to get others and tourists to come to Vegas, um, that will be the number one perfect option for you. Uh, they, they, they prioritize you to have a great time. And for my question for that is, you like, I think New York is like, when you think of New York, you think of Times Square, when you think of New Orleans, you think of Bourbon Street, when you think of LA, you think the Hollywood sign. When you think of Vegas, what is something that someone has to do? What is that thing, that, that big thing about yeah. Vegas that makes Vegas, Vegas? Um, well, I would say one of the most Instagrammed places in, in, that we see in the world is the, uh, the fountains at the Bellagio. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it runs every 15 minutes in the evening but it's all choreographed to songs that has fountains, you know, going everywhere. It is the probably most iconic uh, location in Las Vegas uh, that you have to take in a show. I brought my kids there, my wife there, and they were blown away at how orchestrated all that is to, you know, to music. But, uh, you know, the Bellagio fountains, that is, that is a must. It's in the heart of the strip. You can't miss it. And there's a lot of cool ways you can see the, the, the fountains, whether it is ground level, whether it's above, uh, there's observation towers. You know, we've replicated the Eiffel Tower across the street from the Bellagio Fountains. That's three fourths the size of the real Eiffel Tower in Paris. Um, there's there's great opportunities to see the Bellagio Fountains not only 
ground level, but from an aerial uh, shot. Even doing a helicopter ride over the strip, I've been very fortunate to do that with the fountains going off. Um, that, that is an absolute must on anybody's list if they're coming to our city. Um, as a music lover, are there any particular like music concert events that are like maybe yearly or something that's always happening yes. in Vegas that visitors and tourists can go to? You bet. So the iHeart Radio Music Festival is every year in Las Vegas. It always takes place in September. This year it takes place uh, on September 17th. Um, that same weekend, uh, we also have the Life is Beautiful Festival, uh, which is downtown Las Vegas on multiple stages um, over that same weekend. So Life uh, iHeart Radio Music Festival is, is definitely what we, uh, we have every year. Uh, we also have the Electric Daisy Carnival, EDC, so it's, a, it's the EDM dance, um, you know, kind of that music scene that has the most popular DJs that are in that whole music genre. Um, that normally happens in May because of COVID that got delayed, but that EDC is still happening this year uh, over the dates of October 22nd to the 24th. That may bring in about 300,000 people and they have it out at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So uh, different kind of cool music genres. I mean, iHeart's kind of the current pop culture for current pop music that, you, you know, obviously you're hearing on the radio, EDC, EDM music, uh, then Life is Beautiful are more of the up and coming newer artists from different music genres. Um, for someone that's never been, as I'm looking in your background, talk about the, the, the explorers, the ex explorations that people can visit maybe right outside of Vegas um, that's not particularly in the heart of the city that they can do as well. Uh, sure thing. So, uh, Red Rock Canyon is only about a about 15, 20 minute drive west of the strip. Multiple, uh, you can actually just do the scenic drive. It'll probably take you about a half hour. Beautiful. It, it looks like the, uh, the Red Rock of Mars, uh, the planet Mars. Uh, it's amazing from the strip that in 20 minutes you're immersed in a totally different uh, you know, environment. We also have Valley of Fire, um, beautiful canyon area as well. That's about 20 to 20, I'm sorry, that's more of about an hour outside of Las Vegas. Uh, we also have Mount Charleston. Uh, if you can believe it in the winter, the elevation is so great of a change that you can be skiing in the winter time. Mount Charleston is only about a 45 minute drive from the strip. Um, so Vegas people may not realize is we are in the bottom of a valley surrounded by mountains. Um, so for those that kind of like, wait, you're in a desert, how can you be skiing? Uh, yeah, Mount Charleston has elevation that uh, you know gives that recreational activity that people you know can take advantage of. So, but don't forget, you know, you have Grand Canyon, that's about a three hour drive, uh, two, three hour drive from Las Vegas. Uh, Hoover Dam is about a 30 to 45 minute drive from Las Vegas. So some of these, you know, seventh wonders of the world. I mean, you know, Grand Canyon is unbelievable. Hoover Dam is, is a pretty unbelievable site uh, to take advantage of. So if people are looking for a little break from the casino and the, the, the ching chings of the, uh, you know, slot machines, mm -hmm. um, some of those can be great half day trips that people can uh, take advantage of and know they're very close to the city. I don't know how close we are on time, um, so I just I just want to kind of get closer and wrap things up. But I also want to ask you, what is the one thing you want people to take away from everything that you've talked about? What's the one thing about Vegas that you want them to proceed to remember? Sure, uh, I would say give us a chance if you haven't been in Las Vegas for a while. Um, you may remember old school Vegas, you know from. 10, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, it's completely changed. It's evolved so differently. I mean, give us another chance. And I, I really feel like we're going to be able to offer so much uh, in experience wise that you can't find in other cities. And maybe if you've never been to Las Vegas, and the reason why is because you're just not a gambler and that is a turnoff, uh, I challenge you to know, I challenge you that uh, take a chance in coming to Las Vegas because yes, there will be casinos around. But there are so many other experiences you can take advantage of that you can come away from that trip saying, you're right, I, I had a great time and gambling wasn't, you know, even a concern and it wasn't even a, a, a negative thing that kind of uh, I thought about while I was there because some people just that's not their, their thing and that's fine. Um, we don't, we're not forcing that on anyone, of course. Um, if that's not your thing, then we got plenty of other things to do. So. Um, I, I challenge everyone that uh, that's listening, you know, give a, give us a, give us a chance to, to come back and kind of re uh, rediscover uh, the destination. Uh, and I think you'll be very pleased in what you're going to see. Absolutely. Um, 
for the listeners that I may not got a qu- I may not have gotten a question that they had um, to you. Um, is there any ways they can reach you or your company on social media? Um, any ways possible to ask any further questions? Sure thing. So our handle is hashtag Vegas. I know, shocking, right? Pretty, pretty easy. Um, so, and then our consumer site is uh, uh, visitlasvegas.com. Uh, that's going to be a great resource site. And if you have questions, you can actually uh, find that. Uh, there's an email you can find through that website as well. So if they have questions. So we're more than eager to help answer those. And I will list uh, those websites in the platforms on in the in the episode on social media and Spotify, App Podcast, everything. So you people can, you know, easily get to uh, Mr. Peterson, what he's been talking about and easily book and everything. So I will make it as easy as possible for you guys. Um, and I thank you if you're still sticking through for sticking through us, sticking with us throughout this thing, because I know this isn't our typical thing. Um, But we're taking a little head turn and we're kind of going forward with it. So thank you for sticking with us. Um, And thank you, Mr. Peterson, for coming on and giving me the chance to talk to you and speaking about what it is you do. So and thank you for the time. It really means a lot. Thank you. You bet. Dale, my pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. And um, it's it's a fun city. I mean, I I grew up in uh, uh, the Midwest and didn't know anything about Las Vegas for probably 22 years of my life until I got into the travel industry. And boy, I fell in love with the city. Um, and I'm, I'm not just saying that because I sell it. I truly <laughs> yeah. love, love how fun it is. And, uh, you know, you always, like I said, it's a smile and a story, you know, and, and the story is so different for so many people when they're coming to our city. That's what I love about it. Um, and I hope that your listeners are, are eager and kind of can find their own story when they come visit us. A smile and a story. Remember that, people. A smile and a story about Vegas. A smile and a story. I make sure to put that in there. A smile and a story. <laughs> Take it in, enjoy, and please, 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 please go tour Vegas. Thank you, everybody. God bless. See you next week.